mask or you can just take take it off when you speak. Okay, Luisa. And I thought everything in English because we are, yeah, everyone can ask. Um, hi, thank you, Luis. Um, yes, so we had a meeting today of 90 minutes with Chancellor Merkel. Um, we had a discussion for all of that time. Um, we were discussing matters concerning German politics, European politics, and international politics, um, and in particular also trade agreements and um, pricing mechanisms for carbon. And I think we're now um, happy to take your questions. Yes, sure. Um, meldet euch einfach, wenn ihr was fragen wollt. Und Jawohl. Da hinten, wenn Sie einmal zum rechten Stand Mikro gehen könnten. Und das linke wäre auch noch frei, da könnte man auch noch hingehen, um noch eine zweite Frage zu stellen. Hier rein. Uh, ja. Angela Ulrich vom German Public Radio, over here. Would you please detail a little bit uh, about the discussion with Angela Merkel? What did you ask her? What did you want? From, uh, what should, you, should, should she give you and what did you get? Anuna, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we had the meeting and the, we went to Angela Merkel because we wrote an open letter to all heads of state and world leaders. And we had, some f we had a few demands in there. And the thing that we mostly asked for is the fact that we want leaders in this crisis. And we don't have any leaders right now that are treating the crisis like a crisis. We asked her also to communicate openly about her policies and that if she knows that the uh, targets that we've set now are not enough, that she communicates this. Because we cannot be the only ones communicating about the, the urgency of the crisis when our politicians and world leaders are not, because then it's way harder to create a platform with people that can, um, that can go for this. And also, um, more specifically, we talked about the Mercosur trade agreements, and we said it is really not okay if Europe would sign this and ratify this because it would violate human rights in the Amazon forest, and we are also already now responsible with Europe for the destruction of the Amazon forest. And I was very happy to hear that Angela Merkel said she would not ratify the agreement as it is today. Yeah, I mean, what it comes down to is that we asked her to, to treat the climate crisis like, like you treat any other crisis. And uh, we told her to face the climate emergency, which was also the core message of our open letter. And um, what we want is, uh, is leaders. Uh, we want people to step up, to, to, to dare to step out of their comfort zones, to put, to prioritize the future ahead of the now, and to be brave enough to, to think long term and take, take people's I mean, take care of people, and uh, that is what we want. We want leaders to step up and uh, take responsibility, treat the climate crisis like a crisis. Okay, yeah. The German press agency, DPA, uh, were you happy or were you disappointed with what Angela Merkel had to tell you? You said you were happy about the trade agreement, but in general, what's your impression? Luisa, I mean, does anyone else have a question at the moment or now? I think they have it. Um, yes, so we were um, thankful for the occasion and for the time, which was certainly um, well, quite a lengthy conversation. Um, it became very clear that we look at the situation from um, different perspectives. Um, and we made clear that what we are asking for is nothing less and nothing more than the Paris Agreement to be translated into politics. So um, we believe there's a bit of a misunderstanding of what we're asking for, which is not what we like or what our opinions are, but what we see needs to be done according to the science, um, which is um, yeah, where we had a longer discussion about. We asked her to like we said, we need leaders that are brave enough to face the actions that we actually need, even though it is hard to take those decisions. And she responded that she told us that she will take into consideration to 
try to be more brave. Okay, wir wollten ja eigentlich mal zwei Fragen nehmen, es gibt jetzt immer nur eine. Ähm, jawohl, das ist die zweite, dann kannst du schon mal rübergehen und dann kannst du schon mal starten. Dankeschön. Rosanna Pugliese, ANSA, Italian Press Agency. And um, Greta, I hear you that you said that we need uh, leaders. And so my ask, uh, my, my question, to, question to you is, the, um, uh, what do you think about uh, Angela Merkel? Um, uh, she's brave enough, uh, in your uh, opinion. And what do you think about uh, a world uh, in which uh, the United States of America, uh, a president like Joe Biden um, uh, have, and not anymore uh, Donald Trump? Uh, it, it would be better for your fight uh, against the, the uh, climate change. Thank you. Okay, and we, we take the second question. Yes, thank you. Svante um, Martin, Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. So you just said that 90 minutes is quite a long time. Um, but now you're saying you asked her to be brave, you asked her leaders, and surely she said a little bit more than just that she would consider being brave, I hope. Can you give us a little more concrete examples of what you've talked about in those one and a half hours? Uh, yeah, what I think about Angela Merkel, I think she's, she was nice, she was very friendly. And uh, I think that anyone could be brave enough to become that leader. Uh, and she's definitely, she has a huge responsibility, but also a huge opportunity to become uh, a leader like that. Uh, and that goes for every everyone. You don't have to be uh, a prime minister or a chancellor or a president to, to take on that role. You can be anyone just being being on the street uh, using your, your your duty as a democratic citizen to be to be involved, to get engaged. Anyone can become that leader. So, so um, yeah, anyone can become that leader. And um, Nein, yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's fine. We, we met Merkel today, not Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we can have the discussion after we talk to yeah. Joe Biden then. Yeah. Um, and uh, on the question for the 90 minutes, um, so with the climate crisis, we are all facing a very, very complex political situation because you have to prioritize the future over the past and um, the interests of you know, future generations have to be somewhere balanced um, with the, in balance with the interest of the generations today. And that is, a, that is a huge challenge and we're not denying that at all. And we are seeing how, yeah, how big this um, challenge is. Um, and we are asking for a lot, we know that. Um, yet, um, and that's what we discussed about also how, you know, the changes that we, we need, need to come either from politics or they will come from nature, but it's only one that we can actually have a say about. Um, so that is a, yeah, it's a political challenge, it's a democratic challenge, and as democratic citizens, we need to protect democracy, but we also need uh, to equip democracies to rise up to that challenge. And um, yeah, and that is um, something that really, yeah, I think we yeah. spent quite a while talking about too. Nice, now we have two questions and I would take two more. There's already someone rounded up here. Maybe we can, yeah, if you can go to the right microphone and I think we need to close then. Okay. Uh, hello, Leo Ginsburg from the newspaper uh, Build. My question is, Konstantin Nimmerfro of Fridays for Future Frankfurt criticized that uh, Fridays for Future groups had been informed about the meeting only a few days before, and he told that the letter you wrote to the head of states also has not been coordinated with the Fridays for Future groups. They feel overrun. What do you say to these accusations? Okay, and the second question is now there. Christopher Wittig, RTL and NTV. I have two questions. Do you know why? You get uh, your appointment, especially today. And one question to Greta, please. Um, can you say something to the meeting and to the, yeah, uh, maybe the special day today? Is it a special day for you? And yeah, that's it. Uh, well, yeah, today marks the, uh, 
uh, it is exactly two years ago since the first school strike climate took place so uh, so we I guess <laughs> we celebrate two year anniversary but we aren't the kind of people who who spend time to celebrate but uh, but yeah so I guess it's an important date and uh, as as far as uh, Fridays for Future, we have never said that we represent Fridays for Future. We do not speak on behalf of Fridays for Future. Fridays for Future is a grassroots movement uh, made up of individuals. It is not an organization, an organization with representatives. But um, and we didn't. The letter wasn't written as Fridays for Future, but as individual climate activists. So to get that, to make that clear that it is not communicated as if we represent Fridays for Future. Yeah, I think that's um, and um, we are constantly evolving as a movement, the way we organize ourselves. I talked to Konstantin on the phone last week, so I'm sure we find ways around that. Um, but I don't need to do that here. Okay, dann haben wir die zwei letzten Fragen noch und äh, ja, mögen Sie beginnen? Hi, this is Julie from uh, AIB Public Broadcaster. I just want to come back again to Angela Merkel. Was she in any way a little bit more specific about the Paris Agreement and also we have the presidency of the Council of the European Union at the moment. Did she say anything about any detail planned uh, or any commitment for uh, the next few months? Yes, so of course that was also why it is an important moment to meet her today and du during those six months of the presidency because uh, Germany has a huge responsibility not only because um, it is a developed country that has itself a responsibility but also because we are they are now the leader um, at the council and we want to make sure that she brings those those targets higher up. That's what we also, not concrete, we ask her to go further, of course, because right now the targets where they are are not reaching the Paris Agreement. And so we ask her also concretely, how can you make that happen? And I mean, as a physicist, she reaffirmed that she does understand the science and that it's no excuse that she doesn't understand the science um, behind the climate crisis. And as a politician, she well understands the uh, political complexity behind that um, struggle. And the question now is how to fill that gap, because we are um, dimensions away from where we should be, according to Paris. Um, so she seemed to be aware of the challenge ahead. And she at least confirmed that she is willing to get stuff done during the presidency. Um, yet, eventually, by the end of the day, it's about carbon budgets, it's about very clear targets, and it's um, about very, well, it's about numbers and figures, and uh, for that we need action, and um, yeah, more than really nice and big words. Yeah, so I mean, right now we are kind of stuck in a loop. Uh, I mean, as long as the climate crisis is not being treated as a crisis, we won't be able to to achieve sufficient changes, of course. And uh, it's like these four main players, like government and uh, people, media and business, and everyone is blaming each other. And it's like we're stuck in a squirrel wheel, or just hamster wheel in English. Um, and uh, everyone is blaming each other. And unless that cycle, that vicious cycle can be broken, unless anyone breaks that cycle, we won't be able to get anywhere. And that's, yeah. And everyone has a responsibility. And um, I, I tell you, especially as media here, you also have a huge responsibility in communicating this crisis treating this crisis as a crisis. It should not be only up to, to us children and uh, scientists to communicate the urgency of the climate crisis. So uh, 
someone needs to break that cycle and that could be anyone. anyone everyone has a responsibility but of course the bigger your platform the bigger your moral duty and the bigger your uh, um, sorry, carbon footprint also the bigger your moral duty and responsibility and e everyone has different opportunities everyone has are in different situations and can act in different ways but uh, everyone can act uh, in one way or another so so yeah. yeah but maybe to add up everyone has a responsibility but everyone does not have the same responsibility so as Europeans we are privileged we are uh, not facing the biggest consequences of climate change yet, but people are already dying today, already facing the consequences today, and our responsibility, and mainly our historical responsibility is huge. And that is why Europe not only has to be the leader, but has to go way faster than where we are today. And what we bring up as a message here is not what we think or, oh, what should we ask her, but it's concrete facts that come from experts. And we only try to bring, you know, break this huge space between what we keep on hearing from experts and what we see actually happening. It's just the gap is so big. And so we, we hope we can fulfill this gap and work together forward. But for that, we have to understand what's actually the situation and that's where everyone is responsible okay yeah i mean we we often say that we are all in the same boat after all and um yes that is true everyone will be affected by but uh, in on that boat some are traveling business class so to speak and uh we we need to take that into account and we also need to look at the historical emissions and uh Speaking of responsibility, and uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I think it's um, getting really hot. More questions? Okay. Uh, Bernard Patro with the newspaper Die Tageszeitung. I'm referring to the open letter that you sent and that you also brought today to Merkel. Uh, in this letter, you give very specific uh, topics. You're talking about uh, the halt of all fossil investment, about uh, ending fossil fuels, uh, subsidies, uh, a carbon budget. Did you address this with Angela Merkel and did she say anything uh, on these issues? Uh, and the next question would be, in this letter also you say that we need a new system to overcome the climate crisis. Could you elaborate on that and did Merkel agree that we need a new system? Thanks. Uh, yes, we had some specific demands in the letter, some specific non-political demands uh, that would be the very minimum of what needs to be done to be in, to, to stay below 1.5 degrees of global temperature rise and uh, stick to the Paris Agreement. Um, but, uh, I mean, and uh, we discussed some, some demands, but it's, it's complicated, you know, and we discussed the um, the goal of um, net zero 2050 for for the EU, which of course would not be consistent with the Paris Agreement, and the we talked we discussed a bit about the upcoming impact assessment report uh, for um, for the EU's uh, emission targets, and uh, uh, what to clarify when when we say that we need a new system. We mean that if you look at the the planned production of fossil fuels, that I mean the world is planning to to to, to build to produce uh, uh, until the year 2030, uh, according to the UN's emissions gap report, is um, is 120 percent more than what would be consistent with the 1.5 degree target. So, so you see that it doesn't really add up. So if we are to stay below that target, we are going to have to make it possible to, to abandon valid contracts and deals. And um, that is not possible within today's system. And that is a 
proof, uh, black on, on white, that we need in this system in order to, to achieve these targets to stay below these safety limits. And um, just as simple as that, if you just add up the numbers. We need a system that takes into account that we have a planet that has limited resources. And we are a bit scared that today this is not taken into account. Okay, and we have one more question over there. Thank you, my name is uh, Ralph Bollmann from Frankfurt Allgemeine on Sunday. Uh, you said uh, that you understand that the situation became more complicated for politicians because of uh, Corona crisis. Uh, uh, my question is if uh, you have changed your strategy, your approach uh, because of the crisis, is there anything which is different now than before for your movement? Thank you. Well, as for everyone, um, many things are different. Uh, we are people too, so we do experience a deadly virus um, everywhere, so that's um, obvious. Um, then we are a movement who you know, used to um, strike as a, um, in masses on the streets, which was for many weeks not thinkable during Corona, and is still a very challenging task. Um, Yet there were also similarities. You know, we are a movement that always said, unite behind the science and um, fight every crisis. And that's what we did as a movement too during Corona. So we took the Corona pandemic and we're still taking it as seriously as we should. We are listening to the science and we are adjusting. So we are moving to spaces where we can strike um, safely, sometimes um, digitally, sometimes in different, like in smaller numbers on the streets. And um, yet we're seeing that compared to the corona pandemic, the climate crisis is really, um, you know, yes, not being taken nearly as seriously. And corona has, you know, once again demonstrated what it looks like when you decide to take a crisis seriously. And um, we're taking it from there on and really, you know, taking that um, into account when we ask the climate crisis to be treated. Um, as a crisis, hence we have decided to um, strike again globally, safely if possible on the streets or digitally if in places where we can't be on the streets. So we're mobilizing right now for September 25th. Um, and that was a really challenging decision to make because um, we see the, um, yeah, how difficult it is to today to organize a global action day um, when people certainly face different struggles all around the world. Um, though the climate crisis hasn't slowed down, it's escalating and wherever you look, we're seeing people suffering from it. So obviously um, we need people to um, demand action. And this is obviously what we keep doing. And um, yeah. I think also that um, COVID, I mean, also proves what politicians can do. Because for two years we've heard that we cannot take drastic measures and there is no platform and there is no money, but apparently there is. And there is a lot of people who will do extreme things if you just inform them and if you let science scientists talk, for example, with what happened with COVID. And also, post-COVID is like a huge opportunity to take things differently. Our economy kind of collapsed and we also talked to Merkel actually about the fact that the European Union is now releasing 2,000 billion euros of state aid, but we are still investing it in an economy that inherently fuels the climate crisis. So instead of investing in a sustainable future, we're still investing money in a future that I myself don't even want to live in. So these are also important things to take into account when we think about Corona. And we have one more question over there. Hello, I'm Susanne Ehlerding, I'm with Tagesspiegel here in Berlin. And this is a follow-up on what Luisa Nova said earlier on the balance between generations. And I'm wondering, you know, um, there are so many more people who are over eight, uh, 60 years old here in this country, and voters, than, and, and there are so much more fewer people who are young like you are. And do you see the danger that this conflict of interest cannot be overcome and that we go on business as usual for too long. Is this w one thing that you fear or uh, danger that you see? 
Thank you. Um, well, it could be um, a danger, surely, yet maybe Fridays for Future is the proof how to overcome it because you can ignore melting glaciers and you can ignore hurricanes happening on the other side of the world, but you can hardly ignore your own children asking you to change your ways. And hence, you know, bridging that gap between generations and um, turning towards um, your parents, grandparents, people close to you um, has turned out as we see it to be a, um, one way forward um, to yeah, emphasize when we know we have for once to act in um, to act for the future, which we are, and to prevent crises instead of reacting to it only, um, which is obviously a new way to go, but what we need to do in times of the climate crisis. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think that's it. We have a solid half an hour. Maybe you want to have some closing statements. Maybe we want to announce the next global strike. Uh, for me, I want to thank Haus der Kulturen der Welt uh, for hosting us. Um, and we are really happy to be in this place, which feels really suitable. And they've also recently started a campaign on, well, a topic closely related to ours. I don't know how in English, yeah. Okay, maybe you want to say something about the future. Like the next strike, I think uh, we should yes, promote it. Um, so as um, Emma said, the next was climate, the next day um, of climate action, as we call it, is um, coming up on September 25th. Um, we are um, mobilizing everywhere, but it's very difficult in different regions around the world. So depending on what the con corona pandemic allows, um, we will strike online or offline. Um, in Germany, as of for the German press, we are planning several hundred strikes on the streets, um, very safely um, corona conform. Um, and besides, um, I think that's, that's it for us now, right? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for... Um, answering the questions related to the meeting with Merkel and bye <laughs> thank you everyone maybe you have still have like some technical questions I will, I will stay here and we can clarify them and that's it thank you so much <laughs>